is a short overview of the Meanwell DRS series DIN-mounted UPS power supplies. These are similar to some of the Meanwell power supplies you might be familiar with if you've done other enclosures like this in the past. But what makes this series unique is that you can connect a battery, in this case is a 12 volt version. There's different uh, voltage versions depending on what you want to use for your base supply voltage. But we can connect the battery directly to this It'll charge the battery, depending on what, this is a uh, lithium iron phosphate deep cycle battery, depending on what kind of battery you have, traditional lead acid or whatever, you can adjust these dip switches here to change the charging curve for the battery. So we've currently got this set for a, a lithium based battery here. And then 12 volt output going to a little distribution bus over here, currently powering a PoE switch and some other devices that we'll use for this demo video. Um, we also have uh, this is our AC right now. This isn't uh, this isn't in place where it's ultimately going to be installed. So I've got a temporary power cord here for the incoming AC power, and this meter here is set up so that it's measuring incoming voltage and then current and power usage by the DRS supply itself. So we'll use that to simulate an AC outage in a minute here. Uh, what makes this really cool is that if you're doing these kinds of remote systems or outpost style systems, uh, a lot of times loss of power is a concern, maybe either just from gen general utility supply issues or sometimes these are installed in scenarios where you only have power uh, part of the day, maybe a construction site or tied into other controlled circuits for like lot lighting and things like this. So this power supply will supply uh, in this case, up to a maximum 20 amp uh, 12 volt output when it's on AC power, or it can also draw from a battery that's maintaining if you lose power. And the nice thing about this is that there's really no dropout or sag in the DC voltage when you lose power. So if you've got slight power blips or brownouts also that you're trying to solve for, this is a great solution for those scenarios. Uh, Overall, physical dimensions are similar to other Meanwell DIN-mounted power supplies. You'll just notice that it's, it's a little bit wider, about twice as wide as some of the other units. So right now, it's telling us uh, green status. We've got good power, battery's fully charged. And here, just real quickly, if I flip off this switch for incoming power, you'll see that uh, the, the AC meter measures incoming voltage, but you see our our amperage and uh, wattage meters have all gone to zero. So we've got uh, indicating uh, status indicating that we're running off a of battery, AC failure, and telling us our DC output is still okay. So in this case, we've got some things powered off of a little PoE switch here that uh, isn't really important to get into. And I've also got a cable modem and, and things like that that'll be part of the, the final installation. So those things are continuing to be powered by the 12 volt DC bus running off of this 20 amp hour battery here. Then if we switch this back on, you'll see uh, AC fail goes out, status is orange indicating it's charging the battery and we'll see that we've got a power draw that peaked I think somewhere around 250 watts there. Then as it tops off the battery, power draw drops pretty much just to the power utilization of the devices on the DC bus. Status has gone to green. And so now we've got uh, back to a normal system. There's also some, you'll see there's some relays here that indicate AC failure, DC okay, things like that. Um, so if you want to tie this into other kinds of monitoring systems, you've got some simple contact closures there when uh, you've got AC failure or if you want to monitor DC status, uh, it'll give you a contact closure if the battery's low, if the charger fails. And the nice thing about this, if you do have AC failure, you, you would actually be able to get a notice and route that over whatever you're using for your network because with the battery backup, you'd have that continuous power supply for some period of time, depending, of course, on how you sized your battery and, and your load and so forth. Uh, just give a quick example of this here. So I've got a, I've got a meter set up to just do continuity. So you hear the, uh, you hear the piezo when we've got continuity. So if we put this across the AC fail leads, We've got nothing, then if I shut off AC, you'll hear that we get the status from the meter because it's closed this relay, turn AC back on. So it basically follows the status of the incoming AC. It would be very easy to tie that into a contact closure input on any other kind of device that we're uh, tied in with the rest of our components here. So this is, a, this is, I think, a really cool product for when you're doing 
these kinds of scenarios where you want to make sure that you've got continuous voltage and you don't want to cobble something together or try to fit like a legacy UPS inside here. Uh, if you've done any of these kinds of projects, you know that real estate inside the can is very valuable. And since you're going to have for a uh, UPS system, you're obviously going to have some batteries no matter what. So here for your total volume between the mean well power supply and the battery is much less than if you had a traditional UPS plugged into uh, a normal 12 volt uh, DIN power supply or anything like that, trying to build a similar setup. So really cool little product. Uh, a couple other things worth pointing out. There's the ability to, it, it comes with a temperature sensor that you can plug in here. So it'll do temperature compensated charging curves for lead acid batteries. That's not plugged in here currently because it doesn't use the temperature compensation for the lithium, uh, lithium iron based battery. So no need to set that up. And then there's also this port here. It's an RJ45 port, but that's not a network port. You can, it's a little CAN bus port that you can plug in a program or two, uh, lets you change the charging curves of the batteries if you want to. It's got two or three built-in curves. It's really got enough for most common scenarios. You don't really need to worry about adjusting that, but if you wanna get that little uh, external device, a little interface to a PC, and you can tweak the charging curves uh, even further if you want. Some quick highlights on the rest of this. Uh, this device is going to ultimately be deployed for a remote uh, security camera, uh, cloud VMS style application. So ultimately in here, we'll be installing a PC from the manufacturer that'll act as our cloud recorder and bridge. I'm just using this little one right now for an example. Uh, this PC and the one that'll ultimately be installed in here, we're using a POE takeoff or a reverse POE device, depending on how, how you want to call it. So this plugs into a POE output from the POE switch here and provides 12 volt DC on a typical uh, barrel jack and then a network pass through. So just using this little PC right now, here we've got uh, one iPro camera connected to the POE switch and then a network cable back to our router. Right now, uh, this wiring is not very neatened up because we'll do all that after we get the final bridge PC in there. This, this switch I'm gonna get into in the future in another write-up and video, but this is kind of cool. It's running off of 12 volt DC and outputting standard 48 volt PoE. So this is something uh, not very common, but I'm finding a lot of utility with these that it's got its own step-up transformer inside. In the past, if you've seen some of my other videos on, on some of these mobile and remote style systems, I've used a 12 volt DC to 48 volt uh, external DC to DC step up transformer into a traditional PoE switch. This just incorporates that all together. So it's kind of cool. Uh, DC distribution over here. And then down here, I've actually been having good luck with these little these little mini routers. Uh, this does Wi-Fi inside the metal can. The Wi-Fi is not going to go very far, but really just the Wi-Fi is nice for when you roll up with a technician laptop that you can connect to the system uh, without needing a free network port, without needing to disturb anything. Uh, otherwise, there's really no need for Wi-Fi and you may even want to turn it off. Um, again, we've got this little iPro camera here right now that'll be part of the deployed system. So using that for, for uh, part of our test setup. And then when this is deployed in the field, we'll be bringing in the, the coax for the cable modem and the power will be, of course, hardwired into a, a uh, input, you know, through a traditional uh, bringing the, the AC into the box, either on the side or on the bottom, depending on exactly how it winds up there. But we've got room. There's one other port on this router. So if I wanted to, uh, as an alternative, if I needed more ports up here on my PoE switch, so this is four PoE ports and one non-PoE uplink. Right now the uplink is going to the little router device here. The router device has a free network port, so if I wanted, I could plug that into the PC and then just run another 12 volt line. A lot of these PCs these days work well off of 12 volts DC, it's not that hard to find. So an alternative, if I didn't wanna suck up a PoE port, would be to just hardwire that into my uh, DC distribution right here. Then that would give me four camera PoE ports and then I'd have the uplink port and I'd have one, be able to use the one of the spare lane ports on the router here. Uh, this router supports VPN and a lot, of other, a lot of other things right now. It's really just acting like a DHCP server, but if I wanted to enhance that or um, set up a reverse tunnel to this unit, that's all very easy to do as well. So that's the overview of the system. If you saw the other video, there's the, uh, the lithium iron battery that's hiding behind the cable modem here. 
I added because this uh, because this base was kind of uneven, just added a piece of King starboard there to make a nice flat surface for those to rest on, just like the uh, piece of King starboard over here on the side to bolt the other components to. So leaves us plenty of room here to put in our small uh, small PC for the, the VSAS bridge, and then once we'll close it all up, should be uh, it should be pretty weather tight. This is being installed in Florida, and you might notice that there's no fans on this unit. For the most part, uh, even with some of the sun load we get here, I found that um, not having a fan, temperature stay manageable inside. If, it, if not, I've uh, also been finding basically pelty air coupled cooling systems work better. This is going uh, in a waterfront location, so I really would prefer to keep it environmentally sealed up. Uh, and since it's going to be a few feet away from open salt water rather than using some of the vented NEMA style enclosures that have fans and will circulate air uh, through there.